Hi Aries, welcome to your March 2021 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So you're the first sign that I'm doing because March is a month when the astrological new year happens and it happens to be when the sun goes into Aries. So why not have you first? And um, this is a great month for launching new things because all the plants will be direct and this is happening all month. Now, I, I will say that um, Mercury is still in its shadow until the new moon in Pisces, which is happening on the 13th of uh, March. But let's start at the beginning. So the sun is in your 12th house as the month begins in the sign prior to you, which is Pisces. And when uh, the sun, the transiting sun is in the 12th house, this is uh, the the uh, month right before your solar return. So even on the physical level, you may feel a little bit less energetic and emotionally, you may be very, um, I would say contemplative, uh, perhaps emotional to some degree because the 12th house is a water house. And in general, uh, maybe just wanting more solitude. And then you have your solar return. And technically, you know, your solar return is on uh, the day that is the exact degree of your sun or rising sign. And so it will definitely be in the vicinity of your actual birthday. But in general, we say the solar return happens when the, the sun goes into your sign. So um, that will definitely make you more energetic and this is uh, going to happen on the 20th but um, on the third of the month Mars goes into Gemini and Gemini is a um, friendly angle called a sextile to Aries in the third house of communication so this is a very verbal area this when Mars is there there's this drive Mars is your ruler so that even enhances it but that sense of a, a push to write something or communicate in some way. Maybe this has to do with uh, your ambition or even like, you know, career matters that have to do with um, um, teaching. Or if you're training for something, that can also fall into this area. Um, Mars can be about conflict and the third house can be your siblings. So if there is some kind of friction, some kind of... Um, conflict between you and that that person maybe like um, a power play or something along those lines um, neighbors can be the third house your local area you may just be like doing a lot of um, you know uh, wandering around on foot for some reason in the northern hemisphere this is our uh, springtime so some people start to do more walking um, when the weather starts to get nicer. So perhaps it's something just on that level. On the 13th, there is a new moon at 23 degrees of Pisces in that 12th house. And this is a great time for beginning something of a spiritual nature. You have transiting Neptune in this house as well, as well as having transiting Chiron in your sign. So these are two spiritual influences that are that have been there for a long time, especially Neptune, I believe is around 10 years or so that it's been in Pisces. And of course, you know, every Aries person has um, different uh, 12th house cusps because um, at least how I do it is the unequal house system. So it's not going to be just like a clean cut zero degrees for your 12th house um, necessarily. So um, that might mean that Neptune has recently gone into that uh, sector, but Neptune rules the 12th house. So there is um, a very strong spiritual otherworldly influence from that angle and then Chiron has the healing aspect and the healer 
kind of a vibe. So some some areas people may feel like they really want to do that even as a profession. And so there might be some new development in that area with this new moon for some of you. On the 15th, Mercury goes into that 12th house and that makes your mind more um, contemplative. Um, maybe your dreams are more prophetic. Um, the 12th house is the house of your dream state. And so there's a very strong psychic component here. And uh, so that can, you know, especially if somebody has already been studying spiritual matters, this can just enhance that. On the other end of the spectrum, it can make it more difficult to communicate in a practical way. Um, your mind may prefer more symbolic or even um, telepathic communication. On the 20th, um, the sun goes into your sign. This is the astrological new year. And um, this is just a time in general where all of us um, have a new cycle. Um, and if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, there's the added um, whether we want to call it symbolism or reality of uh, the springtime, which is also the birth of something, the birth of a, the season that feels like, you know, the birth of plants and, and uh, just the, um, the end of that, of uh, the winter period. It's a, it's a power period, um, the equinoxes, because um, the sun is going into a cardinal sign, just like um, in, in the uh, solstice times, the winter and the, and the summer. And uh, cardinal signs represent change. They represent, um, you know, th things happening. So that, that's where that, that's what that is connected to. The very next day on the 21st, Venus goes into your sign. How wonderful, because Venus is such a um, positive influence. In other words, I don't like to use the words, you know, good or bad or positive or negative, but um, planets like Venus and Jupiter on the whole can feel more easy. You know, like things are um, more pleasurable with Venus or, you know, luxury oriented there's an influence of attraction with venus and when you attract something to you you don't have to work really hard to to have it happen i think that's one of the reasons why law of attraction is such a popular theory because um working hard at things um can feel laborious obviously uh, aries people are very hard workers and are very passionate about things and you tend to have a lot you bring a lot of energy to things so it is not to suggest that um you're the kind of people who would shy away from doing something that is um strenuous or that takes some effort. No, I, I think that you respect that. However, on the flip side, I think even an Aries person can appreciate doing things with flow instead of like that feeling of being up, you know, going uphill or kind of going against the stream, going upstream. That's what Abraham Hicks calls it. And so this can be good for when Venus is in your sign, you may f be more attractive to other people, you know, maybe even like you appear more physically appealing or you just, it's just that aura that you have. Or um, if you're trying to get a new job, you, you're appealing to somebody in a position of authority, perhaps. Um uh, or, or, you know, somebody that you need to, to be appealing to that has that, um, that power that, uh, can get you a job, but just in general, you're more appealing and, uh, being you can even be profitable. 
On the 28th, we have a full moon at eight degrees of Libra. Libra is your opposite sign. So for uh, those of you from zero to eight degrees of Aries, this may be in your seventh house. I, I hesitate to say this will be, although I think it will be, um, because just I, I, I like to actually see the chart, but it should be in that seventh house. And this could be developments with a committed partnership whether something is coming to a head, coming to some kind of crisis point, or coming to the point where you want to share your life with this person. Perhaps you've been uh, monogamous and, and, you know, seeing only each other, but you haven't moved in together or gotten married. So that might be getting engaged or something like that. For the rest of you, this will be in the work sector. This could be a promotion. Like I said, with Venus in your sign, you may just in general be um, a magnet for good things coming to you. This can also be um, ending employment. Perhaps you have a better offer or you just... Um, have something else that you want to do. Like with Mars in the third house, you may be like really wanting to, you know, take advantage of some kind of a training, that sort of thing. So anyway, um, like I said, I think this is going to be a, a forward moving month, especially when the sun goes into Aries, which is a cardinal sign, like I said, and um, just all month long with all the planets direct, it, and also at mid-month when uh, Mercury comes completely out of its shadow. So I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like me to look at your chart, analyze your chart, look at other transits and see the exact chart that you have, you can click on the link below to find out the kind of readings I have, the, the kind of special offers I have going on. I thank you for listening. Take care. Happy birthday. Bye.